that's a good eating. Look at that. Cook came out once I got him in. Oh, are you kidding me? Praise the Lord. Hey folks, welcome to uh, this episode of Creaking with Catfish Kyle. I wanted to take an opportunity just to give you an idea of how I do my setups, how I do my limb lines. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. There are people who do it better than I do. This is just what works for me. And what I use normally is Mason's twine. And if you'll notice, this, um, this is pink. And there's a couple of reasons for that. But the number one reason that this is pink is uh, this was the cheapest stuff they had. I was just looking through there and I found it. It was strong enough. It was what I needed and it just happened to be pink. But secondly, it's really easy to see. When you're going through the creek, sometimes it's kind of dark and you know your limbs are kind of shaded. Uh, man, you can see this stuff. Now it does kind of turn dark after a little while, but, but you can see it real well. So you wanna start there. And I like to use circle hooks. These circle hooks, if you can see them here, these are octopus hooks. These are really great hooks. And the reason that I like to use these is these hooks, these are self-setting hooks. Now, what that means is normally when you're fishing, when a fish bites your hook, you jerk up. If you're using a typical J hook um, like this, you're going to jerk up and try to get set that hook. Well, with a, with a uh, circle hook, you don't have to do that. What happens is when that fish grabs it, it's shaped. So that fish, it will just naturally begin to swallow this hook. Well, when it turns around and it goes to swim off, this thing is going to Re gently rest in the side of its jaw and when it moves it's going to set itself that fish is actually going to set the hook itself and so these are great great hooks also normally they stay in really well once you get them hooked these are the best hooks i've found now when you go to thread this hook a lot of times this this line will, th will kind of fray so you got to be careful but you always want to thread it from the front you always want to thread it from the front. You don't want to thread it from the back. That has to do with the way the hook is going to set. Now, when it comes to tying your knot, I'm sure you know how to tie a knot. You just tie your own knot. When I was a kid, a really little kid, I learned to tie a fisherman's knot. And I have never really had anything untie my knot. And I've had stuff break the line, obviously. And people will talk about all different types of knots, cinch knots, things like that. And those are great knots. Um, but the reality is this knot right here isn't going anywhere. There ain't a fish in the creek that's going to pull this knot out. So once you get it tied on there, what you want to do next is you want to go out. I like to go out about six feet. Six feet is, is if you're a normal size man, that's going to be your arm span about six feet. If you're a bigger guy, obviously it'll be a little more, or if you just happen to have giant or short arms, you might have to make a little difference there. So I go ahead and cut it, cut it right there. Now, this is not something you have to do here. Uh, sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. But I cut it here so I can put a swivel on here. Now, if you'll notice, this is a barrel swivel. This swivel is gonna turn at both ends. And the reason you want a swivel that turns like this is because uh, catfish, especially channel catfish, when they get hooked, they'll start spinning. And if they start spinning for long enough, they can actually tear that cord so much that it actually snaps. It'll weaken your cord. And also, if you're not careful, you're gonna have to be making new lines over and over again if you don't have these swivels on here. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and tie you a swivel on there. Use any knot you want to use. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what type of knot that, that you need to use, but just get your swivel on there. Get it tied on there real good. All right, so now you have what we'll call your main line. You see here, it's about six feet long. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and set this up and get it ready to take to the creek. 
And I say that because you may not know how long your line needs to be. You don't know how high your limb's gonna be that you're gonna tie this to. Maybe your limb's a little lower, so you're not sure how much string you need. So if you just leave it like this, you're ready to go. Take this string with you, and when you get to the creek, then you can tie one end to your limb and tie the other end here, and then you're ready to go. Now you can go ahead and do that now if you want to. If you have an idea of how long you want it to be, if you want it to be 12 feet long, just make one more stretch, you've got 12 feet long. Uh, then whenever you want to, uh, get, you get ready to go, you're going to uh, wrap these things up. Now I use a pool noodle. Pool noodles are great, they're like a dollar. You know how I am on money, you know, like a dollar. So you just wanna wrap this thing up around this pool noodle. And then you just take your hook and you're gonna hook it so it'll hold your line in. That's how I do it. And there, you're ready to go. So you've got your limb line, it's ready to go. You can put a whole lot of these things on here. I've got a whole lot that are, that are set up already. Now, another thing that you wanna think about is weight. Whenever you're using a limb line, especially if you've got any type of current in your creek. Now I'm mainly setting limb lines in creeks. It's a little bit different in the river where it's a little more swift. So I like to use these uh, bank sinkers. They're not expensive, they're easy to find. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to tie a knot for these. What you wanna do is you just wanna go up, maybe about six or eight inches above your hook. You wanna just put your line together and then you want to feed it through, you feed it through your sinker. And then what you're gonna do then is you're just gonna go around it just like that. And you're gonna pull it up. So you see there? That's not going anywhere. Now, I don't like to do that until I put it on the limb. And the reason is because it's a little more difficult to store these with the sinker on there. It's a lot easier to wrap it around that noodle if you don't have your, your bank sinker on there already. And then whenever you pull it up and you're ready to take it home, all you do is you push out, you take your sinker off, you're ready to go. So you see how quick I was able to make this limb line? I mean, you can make limb lines, uh, you can make 20 limb lines in 30 minutes. You can have 20 limb lines done, have them up, have them stored, have them ready to go. And you'll catch a lot of fish just like that. Hope you enjoyed that. Happy fishing.